streets couldn't wait. Couldn't wait, man. You know how it is. And I mean, it, no, I, I ain't even mad at the bootlegging situation. That's the same thing they created me. You know what I mean? That's what's up. Sheriff's homicide detectives are asking your help in apprehending the gunman responsible for a deadly shooting in Hawthorne overnight. One woman was killed and five others were injured. Shooting took place in a strip mall near Crenshaw Boulevard and Rosecrans Avenue. That shooting occurred just before 12.30 a.m. It left deputies scouring the scene for clues. If you have any information, contact the Sheriff's Homicide Bureau. This is developing news tonight. A shooting in Hawthorne leaves one woman dead and five others injured. It happened behind a strip mall on the corner of Rosecrans Avenue and Crenshaw Boulevard just after midnight. And that area was closed off through this afternoon. You can see officers taking pictures of the crime scene. All victims were taken to the hospital. Four of them are doing okay tonight. A fifth victim is in critical condition and no word on what exactly led to the shooting. A heartbreaking story out of Thousand Oaks tonight. Deputies found the body of an 84-year-old woman in the parking lot of an apartment complex. Investigators calling her the victim of a hit and run. It happened around midnight in the 2000 block of Los Feliz Drive in Thousand Oaks. The search is on for that driver. Well, the 5 Freeway back open tonight after a shooting in Norwalk. One person was shot in the northbound lane right near Carmenita Road off-ramp. The victim was taken to the hospital. There are no details about a possible suspect. A homeless man steals an ambulance, then crashes during a police chase, injuring several innocent bystanders in San Marino. And this all started in San Gabriel this afternoon when police say the man hopped inside the ambulance while paramedics were tending to a patient. He then led police on a pursuit before crashing into several cars on two different streets in San Marino. Five people had minor injuries. The suspect also suffering minor injuries. He was then taken into custody. Police say the man had a long criminal history. History. Double shooting investigation on Michigan and Gradview. Right now, Metro Police are investigating over 10 shootings just since midnight. Let's get out to our Samantha Johnson, who just got to the scene within the last few minutes. Sam, what can you tell us? Well, Matthew, we heard from IMPD who says they were responding to this scene, found two people who had been shot. Unfortunately, we can tell you at this point, at least one person is dead. I want to show you what this scene looks like here behind us. You, Michi you mentioned Michigan Road and Grandview Drive. This is shut down in both directions at this point, obviously incredibly early in this investigation. We do expect more information from Metro Police as the morning continues. Of course, we'll keep you updated. This, though, is just moments away from the year's first homicide. This happening just a few blocks west of the Children's Museum on Indy's near north side. We know at least one person died early this morning. Police telling us that person was shot and initially in critical condition, but died overnight. Of course, like you mentioned, this is now at least the 11th reported shooting just since midnight. So as soon as we learn more from Metro Police, we'll have more updates for you throughout the day on WTHR.com. Matthew. We're following several deadly incidents throughout Indianapolis, including multiple shootings. So far, at least three people are dead and eight others injured. Fox 59's Hannah Fullman joining us now from the scene of the most recent case on the northwest side. Hannah. Scott and Brick, good morning to you. Like we've been following all morning long, it's just an unfortunate start to the new year, an unfortunate start to 2024 after multiple shootings across Indianapolis. And there's also a death investigation, which is happening here at Michigan Road and Grandview Drive. Now, police tell us that there could be gunshot wounds involved with the victims that are here, but are waiting for confirmation from the coroner. So I'm going to walk you back through everything we know from the morning hours. Here's a map on your screen now where each shooting happened over the past several hours. Now, this latest incident that we've been talking about is not on the map because, like we said, it's being considered a death investigation, at least for now. We're waiting on the coroner to confirm what actually happened here. There were also reports that as many as 12 people were hurt in 11 shootings, but as IMPD learns more and more about each incident as the day continues, those numbers are changing. One person walked into a hospital claiming he was shot, but upon further evaluation, that was actually not the case. As we wait for more clarification, on this double death investigation here on the city's northwest side. The shooting numbers stand at nine people shot, one fatally. Uh, this is not how we want in 2024 to start. In December, we had the lowest number of criminal homicides since March of 2020. Uh, last year, we had fewer criminal homicides, fewer homicides, and fewer non-fatal shootings than the previous year. 
Um, but that doesn't matter to anybody who is a victim of, of the shootings that took place today. We want to get right to some breaking news this morning on Indy's north side. Right now, Metro Police are investigating the city's first homicide of the year. Our Samantha Johnson has been gathering details all morning long. Sam, what do we know right now? Well, Matthew, we know one person is dead this morning, like you mentioned, the city's first homicide of the new year. And we know this happened about five hours ago, but if you take a look here behind us, this is still a pretty active investigation here. We know investigators are here. IMPD's crime unit is here as well. This is the 3100 block of Boulevard Place, and at this point in the morning, it is still shut down. This is just a few blocks west of the Children's Museum here on the city's near north side. Just to give you some perspective, we are still reaching out to police to see if there is any suspect information this morning. I can tell you it appears that there's no ongoing threat in this neighborhood. Of course, as soon as we learn more, we'll have that for you here on 13 Sunrise. It's also important to mention, unfortunately, this is not the only shooting investigation just this morning. In fact, since midnight, we have received at least 10 reports of different shootings across the city from Metro Police. We know one person is in serious condition after a shooting downtown. That happened a few hours ago near Iowa, Ohio and Delaware Street. So again, we're following up with Metro Police. Once we learn more about this investigation and the others across the city, Matthew will have that for you here on 13 Sunrise. For's first step four newscast, unfortunately, with several homicides and violent cases, 11 people shot, three of them dead, and the investigation's just beginning. Nick and Aaliyah have the holiday off, but thank you so much for joining us here. I'm Beerichelle Edmay. And I'm Hannah Adamson. Fox 59's Jesse Wells looks at what can be done to reduce violence in 2024. The first homicide of the year took place behind me, just south of Crown Hill near 31st and Boulevard. Despite the violent start to the new year, some community leaders say the goal for 2024 should be to do everything possible to avoid having 200 total homicides for the fifth year in a row. Just one hour into the new year, police were called to this Crown Hill neighborhood where they found a 40-year-old man shot next to a home. That victim died after being taken to the hospital. For their part, police believe the deadly shooting stemmed from a family disturbance. A person of interest was detained but later released pending further investigation. Then, around 5.30 in the morning, police found a man and woman dead inside a truck following a crash on North Michigan. Police believe both of those victims were shot to death and are investigating that case as a double homicide. The violence is not how anyone hoped 2024 would begin. As we look to 2024, the theme of model should be no more crime in 2024. That's what we should be looking at. What are we doing to enhance and strengthen the existing programs that we have? So far, police have not announced any arrests for the homicide here on Boulevard. As always, anyone with information on this case or the other recent shootings can still contact either IMPD's homicide office or Crime Stoppers. Jesse Wells. Fox 59 News. A new year begins, of course, with promises of new beginnings. But it appears that gun violence continues its pattern of hurting people and terrorizing neighborhoods right here in Marion County. In the first hour of the new year, first few hours of the new year, Metro Police now dealing with multiple shootings. WRTV's Nico Parisi live this morning with the latest on the ongoing investigation. And Nico, there are a lot of these investigations that are going on as we speak. You're correct, Raphael. As you had mentioned, in just the first few hours of the new year, Metro Police officers with Metro Police here have confirmed at least 11 different incidents of gun violence across Indianapolis. Two people are dead and nine others are injured since 1130 Sunday night. Now, let me show you a map of the different locations where these shootings were reported. IMPD says that the first person died from what is believed to be a self-inflicted injury. That happened on the west side at the 3500 block of Holland run circle. Second person dead was shot and killed on Indy's north side. And here's what we know about that shooting. Captain Mark McCarty says around 1 a.m. police arrived at the 3100 block of Boulevard Place to find a van shot up with blood in the front seat area. They quickly found a man 20 or so yards away on the near side of the house with gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition where he later died. IAPD says this is the first homicide in Indianapolis for 2024. And across the city on the south 
southwest side. IMPD is asking for the public's help in a shooting that left a man hospitalized overnight. Just a few feet away from a manger scene at the 5100 block of Sandy Forest Drive were clothes and bullet markers in the street. Captain McCarty says around 1130 last night, police found a man in the street shot multiple times in the abdomen. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. And as of right now, there are currently no suspects. We need the public's help in this situation. Somebody knows something about what happened here. There's not an accidental shooting. There are a lot of shell casings here on the roadway. And if anyone has any information about that shooting or any of the other shootings we're reporting to you tonight, or this morning, excuse me, they're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. And as always, that call is an anonymous one. These are developing stories. WRTV will continue to update you on air and on web as we learn more from police. Reporting live, Nico Panisi, WRTV. Well, it was a violent 2023 in the district following eight separate shootings Saturday. One of those shootings turned deadly. Police say 18-year-old Dakota Evans was shot and killed along Florida Avenue around 6 a.m. Saturday. She, he was then taken to a nearby hospital where he died. Police are still searching for a suspect. Homa? D.C. police are looking to identify the people involved in a shooting in Northwest. Take a look at your screen here. The victim told investigators that two suspects approached him on U Street around 9 o'clock Saturday night. They robbed him, and even after he gave them his property, they still shot him. Anyone who can identify these people on your screen asked to call police. A developing story overnight here from Southwest Houston. Man's in the hospital after being shot in the head while driving through a residential neighborhood. Zach Lajway joins us live from the scene along Clarewood Drive with more on what happened. Good morning, Zach. Haley, not the way you want to start off 2024. As people were celebrating ringing in the new year, shots were ringing out here along Clarewood Drive. Still an active scene out here. Investigators are on scene taking photos of the vehicle as we speak. According to police, a man in his 20s was driving along Clarewood Drive late last night, minutes before midnight, when he encountered a man he knew. The two men got into an argument and multiple rounds were fired during the altercation. The the victim was struck at least once in the head. He continued to drive, hitting several light poles before coming to a stop. He is in critical condition. Police are now searching for that suspect. Some good news, though, out here this morning. I was told Centerpoint was out here on scene. I have not seen them, but I can tell you the lights appear to be on at all the nearby homes. Live this morning, I'm Zach Lajway, KPRC 2 News. Baltimore County police are trying to figure out what led up to a body being left on the side of Bel Air Road near the Gunpowder Falls State Park. Police say they received a call just before 8.30 this morning of someone laying unconscious. When they got there, they found the person dead on the scene with what police are calling obvious signs of trauma. Homicide detectives have taken over the investigation. It's been a violent and deadly New Year's weekend in Atlanta. At least five people were shot in four separate incidents across the city. Two men were shot near Centennial Olympic Park around 8.30 last night. Officers found one man there and learned the other had gone to the hospital on his own. Both are expected to be okay. Around 10 o'clock last night, a man was shot and killed in an apartment on Campbellton Road. No suspect information has been shared yet. And just after 3 this morning, a 45-year-old woman was shot at an apartment near Adair Park. Another person was shot at an apartment near Rosa L. Bernie Park. Both of those victims are expected to be okay, but clearly Atlanta police detectives staying very busy this long weekend. Gunshots ringing out at a Stockbridge Waffle House early this morning, landing an employee there in the hospital. Atlanta News First, Bridget Spencer is live now in Stockbridge. Bridget, how did this happen? Hey, Joy, we are told that this is uh, what happened after a fight between an employee and a customer. I want to show you right here. You can see this window boarded up. Crews were out here earlier trying to repair that glass. Now, Stockbridge police, they say there was a fight between that employee and customer around 6.30 this morning. It led to the employee being shot in the arm. That employee was taken to the hospital, and they are expected to be all right. Now, however, the shooter, we're told, ran off, and that shooter 
police say is still at large at this point. Now, this Waffle House, this location is pretty popular in Stockbridge. Plenty of customers telling us that they stop here several times a week to eat. Me and my husband, we come here and eat all the time. It's very unfortunate. Prayers for the family. Normally, I get good service in that Waffle House, so therefore, you know, it's very unfortunate that that happened to the family on this time of the year. Now, officers have not given us an idea of who this alleged shooter might be. The store did open back up for business a short time ago. We also did reach out to Waffle House for comment, and we have not yet heard back. We're live in Stockbridge. Bridget Spencer, Atlanta News First. All right, coming up on 12.04, this first day of the new year, really a tragic start to the year. Police say that a car struck and killed a woman on the side of Interstate 20 this morning just as her car was being loaded onto a tow truck. Atlanta News First reporter Amanda Rose joins us outside the South Fulton Police Department headquarters with the latest details. Part of Interstate 20 East shut down New Year's morning after police say a woman was struck by a car and thrown over the overpass near the Fulton Industrial Boulevard exit. The South Fulton Police Department got the call about the crash around 4.45 in the morning. They say the woman was just trying to get help after her car broke down and she contacted a towing service to pick up the vehicle. While standing on the side of the interstate as her car was being loaded onto the tow truck. Police tell us she was hit by another car. The woman didn't make it. Police say the driver of the car that hit the woman stayed at the scene. The driver and the passenger were taken to the hospital for treatment. We're told their injuries don't appear to be life-threatening. South Fulton police say they plan to identify the victim of the crash in the coming days after they notify her loved ones. They say they're also investigating if alcohol or any other substances were involved in the crash. Outside the South Fulton Police Department, Amanda Rose, Atlanta News First. Now, this is the first homicide of the year police are reporting. This time, this shooting happened while three victims were inside of a home. Police are saying the gunfire came through a window, killing a man. Take a look at the scene from earlier this morning. It was around 1245 when that shooting happened inside that home that sits near the corner of 70th and South Wabash in a greater Grand Cross neighborhood. Police are saying they were called to the home and found three victims suffering from gunshot wounds. A 53-year-old man was shot multiple times. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A 48-year-old woman was shot in the arm. She was taken to UOC Hospital in fair condition. And a 49-year-old woman was also taken to UOC Hospital after she was shot on the side of the head. She's listed in critical condition. Police believe a suspect's gunfire came through a window of the home. Witnesses say it's hard to tell if gunfire was from people celebrating the new year or if someone was targeted. I was hearing all the gunshots from, you know, them shooting on New Year's, but the, the gunshots I heard then, they sounded real close. And it was kind of scary because it was so close. Yeah. You know, bullets or anything could have came through the window. As of right now, Area 1 detectives are investigating, but no one has been placed in custody. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, police would like you to contact them immediately. For now, we're outside of UOC Hospital. I'm Glenn Marshall, WGN News. And a man critically hurt after being shot. A man critically hurt after being shot in an apparent case of road rage on the city's north side. This happened just before 8 o'clock last night near Foster and Ashland. The man was trying to make a U-turn when another man got out of an SUV and fired shots at him. Police took somebody into custody, but so far no word on any charges. News out of Brighton Beach. A man shot in the leg on Coney Island Avenue. This video of the scene is from Citizen App. Police are tight-lipped right now about the circumstances of the shooting. It happened about 2.15 this afternoon. Investigators say the injured man is now at the hospital in stable condition. Hey, I'm John Diaz reporting here from Whitestone, Queens this morning. We're standing on an overpass right above the Cross Island of Parkway, where below us, police are investigating a deadly car crash tragically happening on New Year's Day. Let's get right to this video, though. Take a look here. You can see uh, the police activity. Uh, you can see two cars just completely wrecked, one of them is upside down. Authorities confirmed with us that just before 6 o'clock this morning, a multiple car crash happened on the Cross Island Parkway by exit 36 North, where the Whitestone Expressway intersects. Now, we can tell you that at least two cars were involved in this crash. 
Now, we still do not know the names or ages of these victims, and we still do not know actually what caused this crash. But again, authorities, they are still investigating all of this. And while they do that, they have many lanes blocked off. So keep that in mind as you're traveling here throughout the morning. But now reporting here from Lightstone, Queens, John Diaz, CBS News, New York. North St. Louis, uh, in North St. Louis, city police are investigating, asking for your help tonight in solving a weekend homicide. Police say a 20-year-old was the victim, and he was found dead with a head injury yesterday morning. The body was found near I-70 in North City in an industrial area there. The victim has been identified as Kimante Black. Anyone with information on this case is urged to call Crime Stoppers. In rural Lincoln County, Missouri, has died in what police are calling a domestic disturbance. The sheriff's office there says deputies responded to a 911 call at a home near Troy earlier today. They found the 16-year-old dead from a gunshot wound. Deputies say those involved in the shooting were taken to the sheriff's office for questioning. We know that investigating deputies would still like to hear from anyone else who may have any details about the shooting. At just about 6.04, we start with breaking news from overnight. A man shot outside of a hookah bar. And then Houston police say people inside the bar locked him out. The shooting happened outside of the bar on Galton Street just before 2 this morning. He was rushed to the hospital and at last check was in surgery. Some of your overnight news. Houston police are looking for whoever shot a man in the neck outside a hookah bar. It happened just before 2 this morning behind the H&K hookah bar on Gulfton near Renwick Drive. The victim is undergoing surgery. No word on who police are looking for. So new this morning, Harris County Sheriff's deputies were called to a shooting at an apartment complex in Humble. It happened just after 11 last night at the falls at Eagle Creek Apartments. Deputies say that a woman called 911 saying someone shot her boyfriend in the head and ran away. The man was taken to the hospital. No word yet on his condition. Breaking a victim was running from his shooter when he crashed his car into several power poles, knocking out power to a nearby neighborhood. The shooting happened just before midnight on Clarewood Drive. According to Houston police, the victim was shot once in the head and rushed to the hospital. The shooter did get away. Centerpoint crews restored, restored power early this morning. We begin tonight with news of a pedestrian who was hit and killed by an SUV while walking along the highway. This happened last night around 10 o'clock on Northwest Loop 410 and San Pedro. San Antonio police say the person was walking across the main lanes of Loop 410. That's when they were hit by the black Chevy Suburban and died on scene. The driver did stop to help and worked closely with police when they got there. That driver is not facing criminal charges. LMPD is investigating two shootings that happened overnight. Police say a man was shot in the foot on Baxter Avenue near Highland Avenue in the Highlands. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Several hours later, a woman was shot on Utah Avenue in the Taylor Berry neighborhood. Someone drove her to the hospital before police arrived. That car was involved in a crash at 7th and Magnolia. She is also expected to survive. And right now in Jefferson Parish, the Sheriff's Office is investigating a murder in West Wego. Deputies say they responded to the 900 block of Beach Grove Boulevard just before 9 last night. Deputies say when they arrived on the scene, they found a victim with a single gunshot wound on the floor inside of a home. That victim died on the scene. We are still working to get you information on a suspect and that victim's condition. You can stick with us as we keep you updated. And of course, if you have any information on anything that can help JPS in this investigation, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 504-822-1111. Right now, the New Orleans Police Department is investigating an overnight shooting in the east. We're told a young man was shot on Schindler Drive. He was taken to a local hospital to be treated for his injuries. No other information is available at this time. Here this morning, uh... And uh, just a pretty awful situation we've been following out of Straight Street as well. But we're going to start with uh, Mount Healthy, where a man was hurt in a shooting there. Okay, we have multiple breaking news stories. Police spent most of the morning searching a Speedway gas station on Hamilton Avenue. That's just north of Ronald Reagan Highway, so if that's the gas station you use, it was closed for quite a few hours this morning. It is now back open. We're told the shooter ran from the scene. No details at this point, though, on what that person looks like.
And another breaking news story this morning, a young woman found uh, is dead now, and a man is now in custody for murder after a shooting last night. This happened on Don Road in Roseland around 6.30. Police say officers responded to a report of a person shot and found 18-year-old Hannah Leet Smith with a gunshot wound in an apartment. She later died. Police arrested 18-year-old Ja'Carri Thompson. He's now charged with Lee Smith's murder. Right now, no word on what led up to this shooting, but we are working to find out more. In University Heights. WLWT News 5's Daniel Dindek has been leading the way talking with police, and they know this is now a homicide investigation. Danielle. Kelly and Stephen, what a busy start to the year for Cincinnati Police. As you guys just both mentioned, I did get confirmation that this is a deadly shooting. I'm going to step out of the way to get an idea of what we are looking at right now. So I am currently on the corner of McMicken and Straight Street. And up there, you can see the crime scene tape is still up. The Cincinnati Crime Scene Unit is here on scene along with the coroner's office. So we're told that this investigation centers around 660 Straight Street. But I do want to let you guys know this all started around 2 a.m. when police were originally called here on scene for quote a significant shots fired call now at that time they did not locate a victim it wasn't until 5 45 this morning that police and people out here did locate a person now once again we are continuing to con find new information out for you as of right now we do not have inf any information about a victim or any potential suspects we're working to get those details for you but i could just tell you right now that police are investigating a deadly shooting and as soon as we get that any more information at all I'll be sure to pass it along to you. We're reporting live this morning in University Heights. Danielle Tindak, WLWT. We are continuing to learn more about a deadly officer-involved shooting in Little Rock. Thanks for joining us here at 1230. Now, that shooting happened last night and left one man dead. Our Samantha Boyd joins us live now from police headquarters. And Sam, you were in that news conference. What did you learn? Ashley, Little Rock police say the suspect identified as 30-year-old Benjamin McDaniel was shot by police last night as they say he advanced towards an officer with a knife last night in Walmart. They say this happened last night at the Walmart on Baseline Road. In, in a press conference about an hour ago, police said the officer involved was working off-duty for Walmart. According to police, there was a struggle as the officer was trying to make a theft suspect, Benjamin McDaniel, who I just mentioned, into custody. During the struggle, police say the man took out a knife and refused to drop it. He was shot by the officer after police say the suspect advanced towards the officer and that officer was injured during the process but has been treated and now released by the hospital. That officer has not been identified but we do know he's now on paid administrative leave as they work to investigate. We'll continue to bring you more information as we learn more but for now reporting live from Little Rock Samantha Boyd, Kara K. Shooting in a northeast Oklahoma, uh, northwest Oklahoma City neighborhood. This one happening just before 7 this morning near Northwest Expressway and Council Road. KOCO's Audrey Goodson joins us from that scene with what we know right now from officers. Audrey. Alejandra, good morning. It's been two hours since this shooting happened, but officers are still here and they are still lining the streets just trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Now, police say that one person was shot in the arm after a fight broke out between two people. Most of the people that we have are local. Oh. They rented it for a, uh, it sounded like a birthday. The, our victim was an adult, um, but it's, uh, the, we do have several juveniles and several adults in custody. That victim shot in the arm and rushed by ambulance to a nearby hospital. Now, we are told that that victim is in stable condition now, but the suspect running away on foot. Officers using their drones to search the neighborhood, but police have yet to name, name that suspect. But we do know that the suspect and the victim knew one another. That, we are told that several of the people here were juveniles, but the victim is an adult. Oklahoma City Police investigating an early morning shooting on the northwest side. Police say this started when two people got into an argument at a home near Rockwell and Britain. That's when officers say one of them shot the other in the arm. Police say the suspect ran off, but officers say they know who that person is. We are going to keep you updated as we learn more on this developing story. But as of right now, no one is in custody. And a little car rollover shut down a lane of I-44 eastbound overnight. Here's a look at that scene near Northwest 10th around 4.30 this morning. That's just north of the state fairgrounds. See the car went completely over the guardrail there. No word on any injuries right now or what caused that crash. Uh, we'll keep you updated as we learn more about it.
Jenny, we're still working to get a lot of details confirmed, but we know this happened just after 5 a.m. Road near Parkview Drive. They say shortly after officers were arrived, they were involved in a police shooting. We know from people on scene that at least one person is dead. We still are working to get the details of what led up to that incident and what led to possibly officers firing their weapons. But this entire investigation is now transferred over to the Lower Columbia Major Crimes Team. And so, again, we're trying to get as much information as we can. We spoke to a few neighbors. They One heard the gunshots, one did not. But they also said that this was very loud. Just in the last you know, few hours leading up to that, people were celebrating New Year's, firing off fireworks. Some didn't even realize that what they heard earlier this morning were gunshots. So still just an awful way to start the new year. But as we get any new details, we'll bring those on air and online on coin.com. Reporting live from Longview, Jamie Seymour, Coin 6 News. Yeah, still a very fluid situation. And police are searching for whomever is responsible for a shooting overnight. We brought this. She was breaking news this morning. Two people were shot outside of a gentlemen's club overnight. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Aliyah Red shows us why police say one of the victims was an unintended target. Investigators are still trying to piece together exactly what happened and what led up to the shooting outside of Lucky's Cabaret. What we can confirm right now is that two people were shot. The club's general manager tells us one of the victims is a bouncer at the club. Now, the manager identified the bouncer as Jerome, but he did not share his last name. He and the other person shot remain at Harford Hospital and are listed as stable. According to the manager, Lucky's is a safe place and the bouncer has no connection to the altercation that happened in the club's parking lot. The uh, bouncer was dragged in. He got shot in the leg and he was dragged into the club. He was standing out front like I'm standing here speaking to you and he got hit with a random bullet. Hours after the incident, the parking area outside the club remained blocked off. Investigators say the parking lot was a prime location they are examining, but their investigation did not stop there. The primary scene is outside, uh, but there is uh, in the vestibule area, there was a victim that did make it in there. Right now, I am working with police to figure out more. Some questions that we're looking to get answered is what led up to the shooting. As more information comes in, we will keep you updated both on air and online. In Vernon, Aliyah Red, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. At six, a woman is dead and two other people are hurt after a shooting at a New Britain apartment. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Brian Tweed. Ten Point News Tracker takes us to where it happened late last night on North Street. We're also learning police arrested the suspect. Channel 3's Mike Cerullo is live in New Britain with what we're learning from police. Bryant police have identified the woman who was killed as 44-year-old Sabrina Finch. Flowers now have been placed outside of the home on North Street where police say she was shot and killed. Two other people were also shot. Police say they both were taken to the hospital, are now in stable condition. Earlier today, police arrested the alleged killer. They say 44-year-old Antoine Harris was dating Finch and lived inside of the North Street home. He's now behind bars, facing multiple charges, including murder and assault. His bond has been set to $1.8 million. He's scheduled to appear in court next Tuesday. We'll keep you updated on this case as soon as we have any... Updates will let you know both on air and online. But for now, live in New Britain, Mike Sulu, Channel 3, Avenue 6. All right, Mike, a lot going on there behind you. Thank you. Start with some developing news. Police in St. Paul are starting the new year by investigating a deadly shooting. Our Bill Keller is live. He's in St. Paul with the very latest on the city's first homicide of 2024. Bill, good morning. Good morning, Tom. In fact, investigators just wrapped up their uh, work here at the scene. It was a very active police presence until just about 10 minutes ago. In fact, after the shots rang out, they spent about 10 hours here. There was the forensic services unit. They were here collecting evidence outside of this home in the Hamlin Midway neighborhood. The police say still very early in this investigation, but here's what they tell us. It happened around 1.30 this morning at a home on Van Buren Avenue. This is just west of Snelling. Police say it began with what they described as really a mundane call to 911, that caller asking police uh, to have officers come over and help escort a group of people who were not welcome. They wanted them to leave a party while police were responding. Well, those operators began receiving a flurry of more 911 calls coming to that same address reporting that the situation had escalated to gunfire. Among those calls was a 911 caller who stated that they did have somebody who was injured 
and that they were taking them to the hospital. The call, the 911 call then was abruptly ended. Our officers responded to the scene still, um, did not locate any other victims, but did find evidence of a shooting. Uh, they were then made aware that a adult male victim did show up in a private vehicle at United Hospital suffering from apparent gunshot injuries. That person was brought into the hospital, but unfortunately uh, died of the, their injuries a short time later. Now the details of exactly what led to that deadly shooting, those are still unclear, but we saw a mountain of numbered evidence markers in the street indicating dozens of shots fired. The name and age of the victim has not been released. That will come from the Ramsey County Medical Examiner. We only know that it is an adult male. Again, no arrests have been made in this case. They're asking anyone with information to call St. Paul Police. The number's on your screen, 651 266 Five six five zero. Tom, in 2023, last year, there were a total of 33 homicides in the city of St. Paul. The first murder of 2024 coming just 90 minutes into the new year. Thank yeah. you. Let's hope they get the tips they need. Bill, thanks so much. Bill Keller in St. Paul. Police in Cahokia Heights are spending their final hours of 2023 investigating an overnight deadly shooting. Fox 2's Max Deaknight joins us live from the Cahokia Heights Police Department. And Max, police say the shooting happened while a woman was in her car just outside of an apartment complex. Yeah, Jordan, that's right. They say it happened just down the road from here at the Greystone Apartments off Old Missouri Avenue. And neighbors say it's an area that sees a lot of gunfire. Police say it happened right here in the 300 block of Greystone Drive at the Greystone Apartments. A woman shot and killed sitting in her car just before 11 p.m. Saturday. As of late Sunday, no one's been arrested and police have not named any suspects. We spotted this car riddled with bullet holes. Neighbors pointed out this second story window that also appears to be shot out. I talked to three mothers off camera who live on this street. They say they don't feel safe here and the gun violence has to stop. They say they'd like to see police patrolling this area more often. A sentiment another nearby resident echoed. The shooting don't never stop. I mean, they start way before New Year's even start and it makes no sense. Evelyn lives down the road from the Greystone Apartments. She says she doesn't feel safe in the area. She's not alone. Everything needs to stop right now with all the shooting and stuff, and I hope everything will change for the better. Both of these Cahokia Heights residents saying they'd like to see something done about the gun violence, and they hope police can track down whoever did this. I'm hoping that they can figure out who, who, who harmed this family, and they can catch the people that did it. I kind of wish that the young girl was still alive right now, and, you know, this could have never happened. So. Cahokia Heights police have not released the name of the victim or any suspect information. We will, of course, continue to follow this ongoing investigation. Live in Cahokia Heights tonight, Max Deaknight, Fox 2 News. Well, investigators say they're working around the clock to find the cause of a deadly home explosion in Whitmore Lake. Four people were killed. Two others are now in the hospital. This is just so tragic. The blast happened Saturday afternoon on Winters Lane near Six Mile and US 23. The blast from that explosion sent debris flying far and wide. 7 Action News reporter Faraz Javid is near the scene in Whitmore Lake with the latest on the investigation and what police are now asking from residents this morning. Now, this is a complex and a lengthy investigation that could take days before anything is shared with the public. Now, the police are working around the clock to solve the mystery behind what led to Saturday's explosion that killed four people and injured two others. Now, here in Whitmore Lake, I'm standing right now on Coil Road. As you can see, this road has been blocked by the police. There's also a sign that says no trespassing. This road turns into Winters Lane leading to the site of the house that's been obliterated. Now, the police have limited access to this road. Uh, only investigators, people who live on that stretch of the road, and their guests are allowed. Now, the reason why this is being done is because investigators are looking into every piece of evidence, and that crucial evidence is scattered across two acres of the property due to the explosion that the community heard and felt miles away. 
An area resident, Ken Cicluna, heard the blast around 4 p.m. on Saturday. Northfield Township Police Department says six people were in the house at the time of the explosion. Four of them have died, and the other two are in the hospital. It's an absolute tragedy, and... Uh curious like everyone else to what caused it chief lyman says a crucial part of the investigation will be in sight from the explosion survivors the debris field is tremendous and uh, uh, and the devastation trying to put that all together you know it makes me think about you know like a plane crash when the, when the faa comes in they have to totally rebuild this airplane to try to figure out what caused uh, you know, a crash like that, uh, it's going to its gonna be a, a long, tedious process. Chief Lyman says a crucial part of the investigation will be the insight from the explosion survivors. I think that's going to be key to find out what they heard, what they saw, what what was going on before. I, I, that's really going to re be really important. Now, so far, the police haven't released the names or details of the people who are living inside the house. And, of course, we'll be following up on this story. And as the updates come, we'll be posting them both on air and online. In Whitmore Lake, I'm Faraz Javed, 7 Action News. Yeah, just a horrible situation all around. Now, we still have not been able to see anything up close. Obviously, Sky Fox giving a very good bird's eye view, but the road right now is still blocked off. Investigators still on the scene. Three people killed in a massive house explosion. Three others critically injured. Sky Fox showing the magnitude of the blast. It happened around 3.20 Saturday afternoon on Winters Lane in Whitmore Lake. Our officers got a call just a little while ago that somebody found debris uh, on the other side of 23 um, with some paperwork on it. So we went over and collected that to see if it, if it was from that. And it's, it's debris from the house explosion. Investigators working to determine what caused the blast. A blast so powerful it could be felt and heard miles away. The sheriff's deputies are here. They were at the, uh, I think, Jackson and Z Road. They, they heard the explosion there nine miles away. Miraculously, authorities say the explosion did not impact any other homes. It's a pretty rural area. There, there's a house directly across the street from it, um, but I, I didn't notice any damage to the house. Streets couldn't wait. Couldn't wait, man. You know how it is. And I mean, it, no, I ain't even mad at the bootlegging situation. That's the same thing they created me, you know what I mean? That's what's up.